over at about 10 o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. You should see a welcome screen. If you do not see a welcome screen, um, please let me know. We have just a few quick house rules to go through. Um, we have uh, just, I guess, the hope that you mute your microphone. Um, don't use the video. I think that there's so many, sometimes there can be quite a few of us on here, so video might be a little overwhelming. Um, ask questions in the chat, so feel free to do that throughout um, the conversation today. And then the first 20 minutes will be a presentation. We're going to talk about scheduling announcements today. And then the next 20 minutes will be Q&A. And I know that we're going to run pretty fast today, so I don't think it'll take 20 minutes to do the presentation part. So if you do have questions for us, um, please ask them in the chat. There are developers that are also standing by in the chat that can help answer them. So there's multiple people available to you right now to help answer any of your luggage questions that you have when you're editing. And then of course, be respectful of others. Oops. So I do have a couple online resources for you that I tend to go through at the beginning of each webinar. And if you don't know me, my name is Ann Griesel, and I am the essentially trainer for luggage um, platform. And I'm just here and available to help answer questions as you, as you edit. And I'm part of the biology IT team here at Iowa State. So if you'd like to learn more about our team, you can visit biology-it.iustate.edu and you can learn all about um, our group. We also have created a luggage showcase and you can view the showcase by going to luggagedocs.info and then click on showcase. And what that will do will allow you to um, sift through the different sites that we've done in luggage and you can actually um, maybe see some sites that are similar to yours and what they're doing and how they're using the different features. So that may be helpful to you. Also, we have luggage feature examples. Um, this is new within the last month or so where we've listed different websites that are using some of the features well. And if you feel that you've been spending time on a website using one of these features well, please let me know. Um, we have over you know 100 or so websites and um, I would love to hear from you so that I can put your website up on this list. Also the digital access website is one that um, you'll want to reference for accessibility purposes so if you're interested in learning more about accessibility this is a good website for you to visit where you can get all kinds of good information from Zaira Jordan who's our Web Accessibility Coordinator. Okay, so on to announcement scheduling. And for announcement scheduling, what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna show you how to create an announcement and then how to set the publish on and unpublish on dates. That will uh, allow the announcement to be published on a certain day and time and then automatically removed from your website um, publicly at a certain date and time as well. So the content will not be deleted, it will just be removed from the public viewing. And then we'll go over the alternate URL field and how to upload the banner image. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of here for a second and change my share screen. So one moment. Okay. All right, so hopefully that is working. Um, you should see the wildlife extension and outreach screen right now. And this is a website in the new theme, which will be coming out at the beginning of the year. So this is um, what 
the, the new Iowa State theme will look like is similar to this website. And if you do not see this on the screen, please let me know and I will work on making this work. So what I've done is I've pulled this website locally. So this is not the actual public website that we'll be editing. This is just um, on my machine. So when you want to add an announcement, go to content, add content, and then announcement. And you can either um, hover over the drop downs like I have done here, or you can select add content, which will give you a list that you can see and you can select announcement that way. So either way, we'll get you there. So for scheduling, what you'll do to schedule is click the scheduling options and everyone should have access to scheduling options. You'll see two fields. You're gonna see a date and a time field under publish on. When you select the date field, you will see a drop down calendar where you can select a certain date that the announcement will actually publish. And so when I say announcement, I'm referring to the big banners that are on the home page. So, if, for example, you wanted something to appear when the students get back on January 9th, you could schedule this to show up on the website on January 9th. And then if you wanted it to show up at a certain time, you can select that time. If you'd like it to show up, you know, eight o'clock in the morning, you can just put eight and then fill in the various minutes and seconds fields. So you'll need all three, um, all three fields or all three parts of the time filled out there. For the unpublished on date, you'll wanna do the same thing and you can select the date that you want the announcement to unpublish. So if, for example, you're highlighting an event for January 12th, for example, you're gonna want that to unpublish by January, late or maybe after the event on January 12th, okay? So you can set the time for the 12th, just so that you're not promoting the event after the event has happened. So if your event is from one to two on the 12th, you can set this to unpublish at two o'clock on the 12th, okay? You do not have to put both dates in here. So for example, if you just wanted to wait for something to be published and then just stay published, you can leave the unpublished on field empty. And if you want to go to the publish on date of a certain date. Oh, I didn't select January 12th, sorry. <laughs> there you go. Um, you can select the unpublished date. If you do not select a publish on date, it'll publish immediately. Um, but with all announcements, you'll wanna make sure that this is selected, the published is selected if you want it to publish immediately, okay? If, are there any questions about scheduling right now? Okay. So we'll go ahead and talk about how to add the banner image since it's right here. A banner can be 1180 pixels wide by 346. So here's your information, it's, it's listed in the help text underneath the banner image. Basically what you'll want to make sure is that your image is at least 1180 pixels wide and at least 346 pixels tall. So as long as you have a nice horizontal image, you should be fine. And um, when you upload your banner image, you'll be able to see a preview of what that looks like to make sure that it, it looks okay. So you'll select choose file, find a banner image, and then you'll see that the banner image is ready to be uploaded because there's the actual file name listed. Make sure you select upload so that you see your banner image. Once your image is uploaded, then you can put in alternate text and title text if you wish. 
alternate text is going to be required. This is for accessibility purposes. So if somebody um, is using a screen reader or um, has low vision and maybe doesn't um, see images very well, this is what's going to be useful for them. Make sure that you just put um, a short, succinct description. So this could be trees with a rainbow. Okay. You do not need to put photo of or image of before the alternate text because screen readers will automatically um, say that ahead of the alt text. So a screen reader would say image and then trees with a rainbow. If you put photo of, the screen reader would say image, photo of trees with a rainbow, image, photo of whatever. And so it's not necessary to put that there. Title text is what is used mostly on a desktop. If someone hovers over an image with their mouse, there may be some help text that shows up and that's what the title text is. So if you would like to put some title text there, feel free to do so and you can do so in the same nature. So trees with the rainbow would be fine. Are there any questions about uploading a banner image? Okay. The other thing I wanted to mention today was the alternate URL field. So with a banner, when you add a banner, you can choose to select a specific URL that someone will go to if they select the banner image itself. That means that you can have your banner image be a link to a news item or an event or even a separate website altogether. If you are linking to an internal website, such as, or an internal page, such as a page on your current website. So if you were linking to a news page that's on your current website, you would just need to put slash and then whatever comes after your website name. So for example, this is my website here, and I would only need to put whatever comes after that slash. So if I were gonna go to a page, I'll just open this in a new tab. If I were gonna link my banner image to this wildlife conservation page, I would only need to select everything, including the slash and after it. So I just copy that and then paste it, paste it here. So that would be my alternate URL. Um, if you don't put anything in the alternate URL field, then when someone selects your banner image, they will actually be taken to a page with whatever content you've put in the body. If you would like to um, basically, I mean, if, if you were, for example, gonna announce something and it literally is an announcement and you just wanted to put a few lines of text to explain what your announcement was, this is perfect. You don't need to put an alternate URL because you can just put your content here. Um, it is required because it's used for teasers in a search result. So you'll, even if you have an alternate URL, you're going to be required to put at least a, one sentence about the content or um, about the banner image so that it'll show up on a search result. If you'd like to control that search result, like this, the teaser that shows up in a search result, you would select edit summary and then put it here. And we've talked about this, I believe, in other webinars. And if you'd like to learn more about that, um, you can learn about that in our luggage docs um, tutorials as well. So if you do have additional questions there, please let me know. All right, 
And it looks like John has um, provided you some information on when announcements get published and unpublished specifically um, from the technical standpoint. And you can look at the link, which I believe you should see here, on scheduling. So you can read more about scheduling on the actual um, announcement scheduling tutorial. And what he is talking about is listed here. Okay. All right, I think that about covers it for announcements. Are there any questions for us? Um, feel free to ask them about your own websites if you're working on something that you would like help with. Please feel free to do so. This is a good time to do that because others can learn from you as well. And you do have um, developer attention at this time. So you can treat it kind of like office hours and we're happy to help you answer questions. Okay, it looks like people might be a little shy to ask questions. Um, don't be bashful uh, to ask questions. If you do have something that you're working on or some luggage feature that you'd like to learn more about, please let us know. Okay. All right, I'm not seeing anything, so I'm gonna go ahead 